is a sponsored video because I gotta save up money for my studio. Today's jingle is brought to you by Audible, the service that makes getting my literature intake super easy despite not having any time to read because all these words, Audible reads them for me. They sponsored me once before back when I told you guys I was listening to The Stand. I'ma be real, the audiobook is like stupid many hours long. I'm only finally almost done and I've got 10 hours left. But I only got so distracted because I took a break to listen to the entirety of the selection series. Sometimes I just, I really need cheesy young adult romance to get me through my day to day. God, I just, I love Prince Maxon so much. But that's just what I've been listening to. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and that was before they started adding Audible Originals. Now their library is like, redonkulous. They've definitely got any kind of audiobook you'd be into, but also, like, if you could listen to the selection for me, that'd be really neat, because I just, I need someone to talk about how the author treated Celeste with. <laughs> Start listening with a 30-day free trial. It comes with one audiobook and two Audible Originals. All you gotta do is visit audible.com forward slash ginger ninja or text ginger ninja to 500 500. Now, on with the speed paint. Howdy hey, I'm Ray. Today we're tackling an art challenge that I've been wanting to do forever, and I technically started a year ago. I'm doing the 20 art style challenge and trying to replicate art styles from series or franchises that have either impacted my art style greatly in the past or that I'm interested in studying more in the future. So like, art styles from stories that were told with teams of people rather than art styles from independent artists that I like, if that makes sense. I'll also be trying to draw not just in the art style, but how I think my design would translate into these different shows. Like, if they would want my hair to be like curlier or straighter, or if they'd let me have my freckles or makeup or all my bracelet or two jackets. So, if you see an element design missing or changed, that's my excuse. Of course, we have to start with my art style, which I would describe as an anime-inspired, cartoony style with blocky sort of shading. The level of detail that I put in my shading varies dramatically depending on if I'm animating or illustrating, but especially because most styles I'm going to be replicating are from animation mediums, I thought that starting with my most detailed shading would make for the more interesting comparison. This video is actually my second attempt at this challenge. I did start last year and I got a whopping three styles into it before I procrastinated the rest. I didn't even realize it had been a whole year since I started, I thought it had been a few months, but I had originally procrastinated so much because I didn't like how my art looked when I started it. It really discouraged me, but at this point I'm glad that I started from scratch because I like this a lot better. This was my first attempt, this is what it looked like, uh, and so, you know, cute little quick little before and after here, and here's the final result. Our patient zero, if you will. The next style I'm doing is Madoka Magica, which is a little weird because as I was looking through some of the shots from the episodes as reference, I realized I didn't really like the styles that the characters are drawn in, even though the show inspires me so much creatively. The style just isn't very expressive. A lot of characters look really similar in their face and body shape. It's very skinny and squished and flat. I do like the cross hatching that they use in their line art, but the character art just isn't the most impressive. Like, perfect testament to how silly the art can look in this show. They can't have a wide shot to save their life because the characters will look so wonky. Such screenshots have affectionately been dubbed by fans as Magookas. Despite that though, Madoka Magica inspires me still because the witches and their labyrinths in that show are so freaking cool. Typically witches and familiars are textures or objects that have been photo bashed together and they look really out of place and they move really weird and it's so unsettling and it's just, it's perfect. I wish I was creative enough to come up with that kind of shit. I love this show. Here's the final result. So, you know, art style two, Madoka. And then here's a little thrown in ob obligatory art style 2.5. It's a Maguka for your troubles. The third style I'll be doing is Little Witch Academia. I have been totally enamored with this art style since I saw the original short film back in high school. It's a really cute anime style. It's got this perfect little, this, this middle ground of being really simple, but also really defined. Like they go as minimal as possible with their lines for the line art in the characters and their limbs and the clothing folds. They only use as many as they need to express the flow and the weight. And it's, ooh, it's yummy. And then every, every character, while they're, they're super expressive, they all have very different eyes. Like very different faces, very different eyes. Look at them, look at these background girls, look at their faces, they're so different and cute. I love them. A lot of times I have a hard time coming up with like unique facial features without making them look out of place, so I really admire this kind of stuff. 
But like, I, I admire every part of the art style for the show, especially the animation. It's, it's almost a shame that this is an art style challenge instead of an animation style challenge because I'd really love to study their in-betweening methods, but God, 20 animation style challenge sounds like it would take me five years. And I hate, I hate that that still sounds tempting. It would, it would take so long, but here's the final result. I don't know if it reads very well, but you know, it's the final result. The next one's really, really simple. It's Homestuck. The art style on Homestuck never inspired me too much, but I loved this webcomic so much in general that growing up, it really pushed me to draw all the characters and it was really great practice. Homestuck was maybe halfway done when I was reading it at the beginning of high school forever ago. And back then I was at a really weird point in my art journey where I had started off drawing nothing but really cutesy moe anime girls. I moved on to finding the Warriors books and drawing nothing but cats. And then it was Homestuck that probably saved my artistic diversity and got me into drawing humans again and finding the balance in drawing those diverse array of different species that I liked to draw. It's the reason that I didn't grow up only knowing how to draw animals. So here's the final result. Please read Homestuck. Cascade changed my goddamn life. Next art style is Steven Universe. The art style itself isn't my favorite as much as how diverse the designs are is my favorite. I love seeing the different way they build body shapes and make unconventional features look endearing and beautiful. Like, like Pearl, she and her big ol' nose, her honker, her big ol' schnoz. Pearl's cute as fuck. I love her and her nose. The shape language in the show is just fantastic. You didn't need me to tell you that. It's a, it's a well-known fact. I just really admire it. It's not an art style that I necessarily want my style to become, but it's one that I think I can learn a lot of really important lessons on character shape and silhouette from. So here's my final result. Kinda Steven-y, kinda no neck Ray. Next art style is Animal Crossing, specifically New Leaf Animal Crossing. I didn't, I didn't look at the subtle new details that they added in New Horizon, whoops. So I'll be painting to try and replicate a 3D look. This was the last art style that I did in my first video attempt a year ago. You know, I did the, the whopping three. This was the third one. And I was already kind of discouraged by the first one, my art style attempt, because I didn't like how it turned out. The second one was fine, that was Madoka. But when I did the third one, the 3D villager, I was so disappointed in myself because I thought it was going to look so much better. And that's what really caused me to procrastinate forever. Redoing it now was stressful because I felt like I had something to prove to myself. Of course, by being in 3D, Animal Crossing isn't something I'm trying to pull my art style towards, but I really adore their character design. I love how the villagers have different eyes and features, and I'd love to sit down one day and draw them all because trying to commit to memory the way that they make characters with... I mean, they all have the same bases, right? Like, all the cats, their base is exactly the same. The sheep, the base is exactly the same. The birds have the same base but they all look unique because their faces all have such different features. And I just, I dream of having that many unique design ideas. <laughs> so here's the final result. I tried to make the jacket look like I had made it in game as a customized dress. And don't talk to me in March. I will be leaving YouTube and leaving the real world and dedicating my whole life to making my island heart-shaped and hearts everywhere. I'm gonna be leaving, I'm, I'm going, bye. Next art style is Gorillas. This one was kind of difficult because there's a lot of inconsistencies in the shading style. I'm assuming that's because as a brand, they've had a lot of different artists. I, it's an assumption, I could be totally wrong. It might just be because the shading they used varies over the years. I, I don't know. I mean, either way, inconsistency in shading style is not even a bad thing. It's just, it's variety. It only caused a problem for me because I had to figure out which shading style I was gonna use from all the different references that I found, you know? I really love how distinct the art style is. I love how it's like kind of gross. Like the fingers being so pronounced and the big old nostrils and the crooked teeth. Oh, it's so funky, I love it. I'm also really fond of how expressive their mouths are. They've always got that like, it's like a line with their top lip, but I wouldn't call it a top lip. It's like the, the indicator of an area between the lip and the nose. They use it well, that's my point. I'm into it, they use it well. Here's my final result. I had to take my best guess at how they would draw a hair bow and long hair because I couldn't find a reference for either of those shits. The next art style means so much to me because it's Oban Star Racers. This is my favorite show of all time. I rewatch it at least once a year because I have to keep showing it to my friends who haven't seen it before. I could talk about it forever. I, I wouldn't have even known what YouTube was if it wasn't for Oban. The art style is really angular and simple. The ladies got these big old tennis ball titties. All the alien designs are so, so fucking cool and unique and the planets are so so cool the ships 
The show, this show is so cool. I think that every last part of it holds up to this day and that it will forever. And I hope it actually gets the sequel that they teased a few years ago because I'll cry. I'll cry a lot if it does. I love the plot and the characters and the characters' personal journeys and the world building and how clearly every single aspect of this show was made with love. And just as someone who wants to direct my own shows one day, Obon is my single biggest inspiration. Here's my final result. You might notice she doesn't have a nose. Nobody in Obon has a nose. If you ever see in my usual art style that I forego drawing a nose, I will always blame Obon for it. It is totally just homage and not at all me forgetting. The next art style is Tokyo Mew Mew. I didn't really watch the anime growing up, not because I didn't like it, but because I just, I liked the manga more was all. However, I'm using the anime art style here for the sake of recognizability and the two feel a little interchangeable right now. I read Tokyo Mew Mew over and over and over again when I first started drawing. Like in my babiest of baby beginner drawing years, I was constantly trying to recreate panels from the manga a la heavy referencing. I don't think any aspect of its influence has survived to my current art style, except for maybe the fact that my characters have like, have the blush mark cross hatching all the time, which I learned from Tokyo Mew Mew, but I, I used it so much when I first started drawing that it only felt appropriate to include here. So here's the final result. It's the first time I changed up the glasses because I thought that Lettuce's glasses looked fun. Next up is Persona. Persona the fifth, specifically. Fifth specifically. <laughs> It took me a whole year to play the game, but oh my god, I loved it. It's probably kind of obvious by now by the way that I talked about Madoka and Oan, but I am such a fucking sucker for worlds where every aspect is clearly considered and crafted just for that world. Like sometimes you see a show where the background or background characters or colors are just kind of generic. Be like, like it's clear that it's a bunch of team of people who all talented people, but, but a team of people came together and like put their stuff together to create something, if that makes sense perfectly valid, just less personalized. But when I see something where every single thing was crafted, crafted just for this thing to harmonize together, I go ballistic. Persona is so distinct. I think it's gorgeous. Everybody keeps saying I look like Futaba, whatever, it's destiny. So here's my final result. Does it still look like Futaba? You tell me. I, I zipped up the inner jacket because I thought it fit the character design more. That's my only note. <laughs> Next art style is the original Sailor Moon anime. Don't talk to me about Sailor Moon Crystal, I'm still irrationally angry about it. I watched the Sailor Moon dub back when I was a toddler living on a military base in Japan, so Sailor Moon has been with me since way before I ever started drawing, so it's always gonna have a special place in my heart. It was my first actual anime and also my very first cosplay. I think the old art style is super adorable, not only are the expressions really exaggerated and cute, but the clothing aesthetic was boppin'. I tried to make my final version look grainy to capture that old anime kind of look. Here's my result. I think it's one of my favorites for sure. I don't know, it just makes me happy. Up next is another manga that I read and referenced all the time in my babyest artist years, just like I did with Tokyo Mew Mew. It's called Chibi Vampire, and I've still got very fond memories of it. However, unlike Tokyo Mew Mew though, oh God, okay, fuck. So, so, Tokyo Mew Mew. I tried to watch the anime. I just, I, I watched the episode, I didn't really get into it because I didn't think I needed it, right? I was happy to carry around the manga because I liked being able to take it to school and draw from it. it no big deal. Chibi Vampire had read all the manga and then I tried to watch the anime too. And you know, because it had one. And I just, oh, even back then I fucking hated it. The manga was always kind of fan service-y. They had, they had big old boobies and they did that thing where they went, oh no, I fell down and you saw my panties, oh no. But it was really mostly about the story and I really, oh, I loved it. It was great. The fan service stuff was just like spice on the side. Like it was a garnish, you know? And then <laughs> the anime, it could not have been further from the mark of what the manga was supposed to be. Like even just in the intro, even just in the intro of the anime, every other scene, the characters were totally naked for no reason. <laughs> The anime, it was just so much hornier for no reason. And I just wanted the story that I loved and I hated it, I hated it. So here's my final result. I didn't replicate the art style of the anime because I hated it. I replicated the art style from the manga covers because I liked those. Mm. <laughs> the next one is obligatory, it's Pokemon. Pokemon actually has a lot of art styles to choose from. So I went with the newer art style that we see in the game's concept art. 
It's basically the, the same kind of layered textured shading style that we've had forever with the, the concept art of the games, but with the more recent aesthetically pleasing facial features, you know, the ones that are like wider instead of taller. I don't think the art style of Pokemon in the games or anime ever impacted me too much, but the creature and the character designs were very pivotal to my growth as an artist. I love how elaborate a lot of the trainer designs are, and there's nothing that encourages that artistic diversity of different species of things that you can draw, like learning to draw every Pokemon available to me. So here's the final result. I think this one and Little Witch were probably the least obvious, the least readable so far. I think to some extent that comes with the pose that I chose, but either way, I had fun. Next is Boku no Hero Academia. I have not caught up with this show yet. I'm still watching season three. And by watching season three, I mean I still haven't started season three, but I think the character style and designs are super fun. <laughs> I like how their features like noses are less detailed, but then their expressions are so expressive. <laughs> Fuck it, okay. Take a shot every time I talk about liking how expressive something is. I'm so sorry, it's just my favorite. Of everything in this list, I think my hero has impacted me the least, but that's mostly because I haven't found the time to catch up, so it's more appropriate to say it's impacted me the least so far, because I've got a massive interest in watching the show, I just, I haven't caught up yet, so I feel like I want it to influence me, so I think that's enough to justify it being here. I, does that make sense? I don't know, I, I like it. I think it's pretty. Here's the final result. I gave I gave her more deco e kicks. Deco, mm-hmm, Deku, Midoriya. Next up is Splatoon, which is a tragedy because I finally got to do another 3D art style and OBS just fucking imploded at the very beginning, so I lost all my footage. Mm. <laughs> so just here, you, you're gonna watch me play Splatoon instead. It's the fashion. It's entirely the fashion and the creativity that goes into the, the clothing and the weapon designs that put Splatoon in the special place in my heart. I'd love to sit down and learn how to draw all those clothing options just to add them to my mental bank, like commit them to my memory, but there's so much. Really, it'd probably benefit me more to learn to draw the weapons or any weapon other than a dapple dually because I need to practice my object and background art. This painting took about five hours Wish you could see it. <laughs> Took forever, but it was a lot of fun because rendering is my favorite part of drawing. It's one of the only styles that I figured would let me have all my freckles and face glitter and, and you know, at the same time, but you can't even see me draw it. Here's the final result though. I dipped her fingers in blue stuff. Ink, is it ink? Cause Marina has like the green fingers. That's kind of like what I imagine would replace fingernail polish because I don't know if squids have nails otherwise. Look, look how shiny her, her little tentacles are. I spent so long on those. <laughs> then unfortunate again. The next style was Ghibli, but when OBS executed my Splatoon style footage, it took the Ghibli style footage down with it. <laughs> so here, instead of watching me draw, you get to watch me play Splatoon again. Like Sailor Moon, I grew up watching Ghibli movies way before I ever started drawing myself. I've personally finessed the hair that fluffs up and moves to get expressive and the, the big old gloopy tears that are trademarked the brand into my own style. I love them a lot. Just a lot about Ghibli is really nostalgic for me. It's got a lesser effect than Oban does, but the still kind of effect where it makes me excited for the day that I get to make my own movies and shows. They make me feel warm and happy and I, I wanna make things that make other people feel warm and happy. You feel me? So here's my final result. Uh, my favorite part is the one really big fold on the jacket sleeve. Always exciting to learn more effective ways to draw fabric. And ooh, thank God. The next one, we got OBS working again. This art style is from Miraculous Ladybug, but you're absolutely hilarious if you think I'm gonna render out a 3D style again. I'm actually drawing this style from some of the concept art of Miraculous. I hear people say all the time that they wish the show looked more like the anime OVA that came out before the, the 3D show, the one with Bridget and Felix. Personally, I disagree. The anime style was fine, like it was pretty, but I don't think the animation was, was striking enough for me to prefer it over the character designs that we have in the 3D show now, if that makes sense. Like, I think the nerf of not having another 2D show was worth the, I, I think the character designs on a lot of the heroes are really good now. And I didn't like them in the OVA, but that's just my take. It's fine if you disagree. However, there is an art style that came sometime in between that anime concept 
and and this final art that we got and it's it is a personal attack on me i adore it so much i haven't been able to find who the individual artist who drew it was if you can find it you sh if, if you know who they are you should tell me because it is it is killing me i love this art style with everything that i am and i would actually i would have actually murdered for this to be the style that the show is done in I would be in jail right now if Miraculous Ladybug looked like this. And here's my final result. I'm, g <laughs> I need to, I need to mourn. I'm so sad. Next up is the Zero Escape series, specifically the game art for the first two games, 999 and Virtue's Last Reward. The third game kind of had its own look. That's cool. That's cool. So Zero Escape is just hands down my favorite games of all time. If you don't know anything about them, or maybe you've heard a little bit about it. I don't know. If you haven't played them and sci-fi graphic novel sort of puzzle game sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'd encourage you to not look up anything else and just start playing. They blew my fucking mind when I played them. I love these games so much. I just like, I can't stop thinking about the story in it. And also the main character, Junpei, he's the love of my life, right? But I can't call him my husband. He's the only boy character that I love in the world that I can't call my husband because I just can't bear the idea of keeping him away from his love interest. They're like, they're a personal attack on me. Everything about them is like my weakness. I love them so much. All three of these games really drive me to want to improve my storytelling ability, so they've inspired me a lot, and the art style's just nice. And you know, it's really criminal that not enough people know about them. So you should just, you should look into it for my sake. It'll make me happy. It was really nice to get to do a more illustration type style, especially after all the animation styles. So here's my final result. I had to give myself one of the trademark killing bracelets. It was required. Next is Devilman Crybaby. Definitely, definitely way up there in my list of favorite shows. It's so fucked up and it makes me feel like shit and I can't stop watching it. Whereas Oban and Zero Escape are things that I'm aiming to achieve with my storytelling, Devilman Crybaby art style is everything that I've never realized I wanted for my style to look like. Like out of all of the art styles that I've replicated in this video, Devilman is the one thing that like, if I could pick one art style to just look like immediately, it would be that. I love, love, love how much they're willing to intentionally break anatomy for the sake of an interesting shot or for visual humor. And I had no idea that you could pull off like, an art style that can be so goofy and so serious and still look like cohesive and it, it, I didn't I didn't know you could do it until I watched the show and it was a goddamn awakening for me. I saved this one for almost last because I wanted to spend as much time as possible studying it and I'm absolutely going to keep doing art studies for it after this video is done. And here's the final result. She's stretching to to outrun the apocalypse. And finally, we're here. We've arrived at the end. The final art style I'm doing is the art style of the character art from Fire Emblem Echoes. It had a really different look to it than the few Fire Emblem games I had played before, and their shading style is so gorgeous, especially the hair. I did my best to try and emulate it, but I definitely didn't do it as well as I wanted to. I just, I love how they have so many, I, I guess I'd call them implied lines and the, the volume that they get through the shading and not in the line art. I just, mmm, mmm, I gotta work hard to get on that level. Also, this is the only drawing that I like totally changed my whole design for because I can't imagine for the life of me seeing casual clothes in this style. So, uh, fuck it, new fit. It's more on brand for me to be like a brawler or like a sword fighter kind of person, but this outfit says magic user. So I guess I'm a magic user, that's fine. Here's the final result. I didn't capture out of it what I wanted to, but it's a start as far as studies go. And here's the final thing and the little, a little grid, a little cheat sheet on the side for any of you who need it. I'm surprised by how much I like the final result. I didn't expect it to work out as well as I think it did. I'm really happy that I waited to redo this because I feel like I've improved a lot more and it looks a lot better than it would have a year ago. So proud of myself for that and something I definitely want to do again someday. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring me. Don't forget, if you visit audible.com slash ninja or text ninja to 500, 500 you'll get a 30-day free trial to listen to audiobooks on any device, anywhere, anytime. 
thank you also so, so much to my $10 patrons who are the following. Dexter Koch, Chris Saru, Hat Josuke, Daniel Baton, Kiba Rai, Roxas Prowers, Blue Horseman 5, Michelangelo, Dojo Kid, Eugeus, Kitten Doodles, Toby Boy, Brianne Embry, Mimin, Drunken Literacy, Madu, Fear Thy Raptor, Cat Dagger 2, Isaiah Warren, Rinima, Peach, Drew Warren, Johnny Rillaboom, Mighty Ninja Lamp, Nyctophilia, Piper PC, Helix, IZ Fan for Life, Steel X, Canaran, Avonpool, Berserker 102, Fox Dragon, Winter Winter Boy 2, Yakumo Soul Queen, Goof, Bray Bun, Nifty, Blueberry, Donald Hayes, Buddy, Dragon, Key the Queen, Coda, Brent, Christopher Turret, Zach Illustrations, Charlie R. Servant, Silent Calling, Weasel Bites, Nightmorrow, Dracos, Cody Richard, It's Daddy AJ to you, DJ Cat Meow, Carol, Fairy Armor, Kara Green, Bionic, Nikozawa, Mew Kichigo, Phantom Kid 02, Furry Fight Arts, Emily George, Kristen Pip, Drex, A Gremlin, Devong 00, Charmaine Lee, Jacob Goodwin, Hachiyubi, It's Katie, Blue Turtle Bug, Diddy, Embla, Hazel Grease, Sleepy Oville, John Brooks Eisenman Jr., Peachy Man, Sayurika, Field of Starlight, Vulpy Bard, Angel Fuentes, Katie Did Nothing, Len Rin Virgil, Seb, Sweet Sammy Baby, Mickey Ann, Patty Melt, Mallow Chew, Matsuo Tanyuki, Flickers, Peachy Mint, Blast 10 Away, Old Man Dunsparce, Hikahyan, Jakey Jellybean, Ditsy, Chia Rico, Star Stevenson, Spooky, T Arctic One, Florina Fairy, Yuka, Ace, No Thanks, Hannah, Cameron Grace, Doodle Crazy Meg, Wummelsdorp Art, Sound Alchemy, Archibald Anarchy, Dylan MX, Singing Joe, TV Island, Free Flight, Firework Cat 25, Cavalry, Kohler 3 Tura, Lilac Witch Kiki, Omar Reyes, Trapel Stone, Penumbro, Andre, Johnny Stars, Dead Times, Troll Killer 254, Stratus Winds, J Bay Mayday, Lord Serenade, James Amora, Midnight Paradise, East West 333, Zephestus, Flaming Puppeteer, Snow Sergeant, Skill Dragon Sylvie, Night Mage 14, Zelfus, Sinister Stephanie, Ethan Gardner, Fallen Zippo, Chesa Moon 18, Aswick, Arctic Century, Sylvia and Dream, Chris Sigma, Sweet S, Fox, Jeremy Reading, Shell, Felly, Antiqua, Dust Munchies, The Orc Cafe, Arwen, Dosko, Nico, Darcy, Gold Dackery, Caleb Whitman, Emma Joy, Gus Daniels, Andrew Robinson, Stephen Cooper, Jordan Brooks, Namorphus, Morty Ellis, Trash Zuma, Lena Swagmaster, Uwu, Daniel Saria, Blue Daniel 16, Kurt Coolman, Red Pandasies, Dan Warren, Cookie Brook, Mercy Mayhem, Koda, Filoso, Fox, Lairatsu, Suri, Anikari, You, Honeybee, Tiny, The Scorched, Blue Swift, Chaos, Orion, Horizon, Blue, and Kabuki. Also, super thank you to my $100 patrons who get a bit of a personalized shout out and also we have game nights like like once a month at least there's ty hall justin inks and aaron boehm cayenne peppers but there's also stupid genius who likes bread we've got eggs machina who's been dissing my man lysander all day stop that shit right now we have momo heart who also loves tv vampires so i know she has excellent taste we have russell the jimmies he wants seed we have nanny nyan 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 ni ho nyan we have the melted house who kept dying every three seconds in our minecraft server we have Lily Pia, whose birthday just passed. Happy Earth Day! There's Jordan Alexander Sanchez, who doesn't know what V-Bucks are. That's cute. Even Quiraz, Qui... Quiraz, Qui... He gave me permission to not know how to say his name. Don't worry about it. Ginger Emu, who called Billy Eilish Bilbo Eyelash once, and I never recovered. Ian Kakato, who requested a Jenko pick, so here you go. Force Raider, who made an awful, horrible hand puppet of me at the last patron game night. So, you know bask in its glory with me. And then we have Raiden, who's still on deployment and took forever to respond to my emails. I don't know how I'm gonna recover. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you everyone who watched at this point. Uh, thanks for watching me play Splatoon so many goddamn times. Have a great day, bye!